We're back in with another build guide video for Marvel's Avengers. Now in the previous video we had a look at Captain America I come up with a invulnerable brawler build and it was actually a whole lot of fun so if you've not checked out that video make sure to do that. But for today we have Iron Man that we'll be having a look at. We've got some new perks in the game that can really change the, the playstyle and make him a lot more powerful than he was when I first actually reviewed him. That was around about six months or so ago. But it's Iron Man we will be checking out. The format of this video so you know what to expect. We'll start off with a quick overview of the build so it'll let you know if you like the sound of it and if you want to watch the rest of the video. We'll then jump into the stat priority. We'll look at the gear perks next. I'll run over the ones that are really vital for the build. We'll talk about the abilities. Next up it's the champion system. We'll talk about which nodes you want to really prioritise and then finishing up we'll have some gameplay. So let's jump in and we'll start off with the overview of the build first. So this setup then will be a missiles build that we're running with, it's simply tuned so much higher than the other weapons, I don't think you have much choice in which one you actually use. So it is missiles, however the, the difference from when I previously covered this is we've now got a setup that allows you to get close to 100% crit rate with this, and on top of that near enough unlimited missiles as well, which is really a pretty amazing combination. So if you like the sound of that, let's now jump into the next section. Stat wise then I'm relatively happy where he's sitting at, there are a few stats I'd maybe like to pull down a little bit and instead have those stats in other areas, so I'll run over your, your primary focus here for your stats, so you've got precision, you want to get that on as many different pieces, get that as high as you actually can, proficiency, if you can get it round about what I've got at the moment, which is 149 which gives me a 29% chance and with various other perks we get which we'll talk about later on that can get you close to your 90 to 100% chance to crit so you're looking for around about 149 or so proficiency. You then got your Valor next, this is definitely on the lower side because we've got such a high crit chance I would like to have this higher, try and aim for around about 200 or so with this. When it comes to survivability you can get that via resolve or resilience, resolve scales better so if I had the chance I'd probably take 50 or so from resilience and add it into resolve instead there. Intensity for me is a bit of a dead start, I don't really bother with it at all, I would like to take that intensity and put it in Valor perhaps. So looking at the stats then, your priorities are precision, get that as often as you can, proficiency get it round to about 150, Valor round about 200 and then just get the rest in resolve to give you some survivability. So that's all the stats you want to aim for, let's now have a look at the gear perks. For this gear section here then we'll just run over the important perks that really define the build. So on your slot 1 you're looking for in the third perk Armoury Boon. So this is 15% increased critical hit chance for all weapons. So this will pull your crit chance if you've got similar proficiency to myself up to around about 45%. For the, the second perk here, I don't actually have it, but what you're ideally looking for is a cold status effect on signature or light signature attacks. That can allow you to get the battery effect, and it's something I'll talk about once we get to the abilities section. Looking at the slot 2 here, you're looking for your targeted buff. So a chance hitting an enemy with a ranged crit attack grants a damage buff when that's up. Your crit chance is going up to a whopping 80%, but again we can get it even higher than that. You're then looking for a warm status effect on your missiles, so I've got that there as well. Moving on to slot 3 and 4, this is where the unlimited missiles build comes into play here really. So we've got reactive empowerment, so a chance taking damage grants an intrinsic burst. This is a new perk that was introduced with the Future Imperfect patch. A lot of people seem to have overlooked it, but in certain characters it's amazing. On Iron Man it's absolutely incredible and this is what allows us to maintain the, the constant spam of missiles. What I would also like in this particular slot, if I could get it, I've got it on a different piece, not my main one, but the third perk down is Aerial Guard, so this gives you a damage reduction while airborne and with this build you should essentially be airborne 100% of the time, don't ever want to be landing with this particular setup. Looking at the slot 4 here, it's another one we use to get the intrinsic burst up, so at the moment I've got Lethal Empowerment, the second perk, a chance defeating enemies grants an intrinsic burst and it's actually close to 40% so this will, will proc really pretty often. 
ideally what I would like as the third perk. At the moment I've got Defeat Free Enemies in Rapid Succession to grant a defense buff. You can get that so it can actually be Defeat Free Enemies in Rapid Succession to grant an intrinsic burst. If you have that you won't even have to worry about any management of missiles at all. You can just spam them and go absolute wild. Now looking at the major artifacts, it's the Tacticon we're using here. This is perfect for any builds that really make use of status effects. When it comes to your minor artifacts, generally in a range build you'll go for your double precision. I've got one precision here. For the next one I was lacking survivability a little bit and I had this drop and it's actually pretty amazing. So I'm using this instead, but if you don't have that, just go for your two different artifacts that have got triple precision on them. So that's all the gear we're using, let's jump in, let's have a look at the abilities now. So we start off here with three quick abilities I'm going to show off that are really important and you need to know how and when to use these. So firstly you have your power dive here. This is the one we talked about, you want the cold status effect that comes via your slot 1 in the second perk and that's your cold status effect on signature attacks. It will take one or two slams to apply your cold status effect and then follow up with missiles and because that's a warm status effect you'll actually be doubling your damage with that. Now next up here in regards to how you fire your rockets, there's two ways you actually want to do that. It may sound silly running over this but it is important. So firstly when you're not using your support heroic which gives you true unlimited missiles what you want to do is when you want to actually aim your missiles and fire them when you do it this way they consume less intrinsic energy when you actually use your support heroic and i would recommend doing that on bosses because the way our setup is it's all about taking out random minions to actually get your intrinsic energy up so on a boss you won't always have those minions so when you get to the boss activate your support heroic and then just spam the triangle button you can fire out missiles a lot quicker using this it would normally use a lot more intrinsic energy but it doesn't matter because we have unlimited intrinsic energy while our support heroic is actually up so that's the abilities that are relevant let's have a look at the speciality tree when it comes to the speciality tree the heroics really aren't that important for this particular build now previously on the support heroic i would normally have the big bubble shield up but I found sometimes that it actually causes more problems if you actually knock down it and the enemy remains within it then you can actually hit them so I don't use that anymore when it comes to your unibeam the, the best way I've found to actually use that is just a way to generate heroic orbs to get your support heroic up even quicker but you're only really using your support heroic if there's a, a large group of elites or if you're on a boss your ultimate heroic ability which is your hulk buster I just use this as a heal because when you actually use it it heals you back up so I'll bring it in, heal myself up to full and then I'll press the left bumper to jump back out again and it's partially filled and it'll, it'll actually fill up a lot quicker so that's what I use that for. One thing that's really important in this section and more important in the actual heroics is your energy barrier. This is something that's very easy to overlook. So you hold down the right trigger, you create an energy barrier, it blocks all incoming projectiles until it takes enough damage to be destroyed. Now with a perk we're going to look at under the mastery tree you can get an additional 15% crit chance when you're near this barrier. So earlier on we talked about how with the damage buff up in our slot 1 we could have our 85% crit chance. That's us now pulling it up to 95% crit chance so really pretty amazing. When you cast this as well you can cast it and hide behind it. You can't shoot through it. The way I like to actually cast it, I like to actually cast it either behind me or to the side of me. That way it won't block my missiles. It's down to you what you like but you want to be using this as often as you can just to get that crit chance even higher. For this mastery section, once again, I'll just concentrate on the important perks. So this one here, Range Combat Mastery, increases all ranged attack damage by 15%. This is what you want to ideally use. If you've not yet got the, the perks that allow you to boost your intrinsic energy, then you can use this instead. But ideally, you are looking to use this particular one here, as soon as you can, really. You've then got your, your missile perks under ranged, of course, so I'm not going to talk about them. But then on to intrinsic ability. So this increases the base regen speed of intrinsic energy, really important. Overcharge duration boost increases the duration of overcharge state by two seconds. It's actually four or five seconds that actually increases it by. If it was only two, I possibly wouldn't use it, but four or five is really helpful when you're trying to take down a boss. We've then got this one here overcharge damage boost increases damage from all attacks while overcharged by 12.5%. 
Moving into utility, it reduces the cost of energy shield activation by 15%. That's the shield we were talking about earlier on. And then here's the perk we were talking about as well. So this is Tactical Barrier. This one here, heroes near the energy barrier gain a 15% critical chance on all attacks. So once again, that's pulling you up to 95%. Depending on your proficiency, it could pull you up to 100%. And then finally here we have Air Superiority, so it increases the damage of range attacks while flying by 15%. Not just while flying, it's while airborne, so you can actually be hovering and you will get this damage bonus as well there. So let's just finish up now with the, the Champion Overview. Champion system, if you're playing a hero enough, ideally in time you would want to fill everything out, but the nodes aren't really tuned that well and there are some that are far better than the others. So the way I prioritise these is the ones I've went further down on with the yellow box are the ones that are the priority. So with Iron Man, you want to focus firstly on your crit chance and your heroic charge rate. Next up you've got your crit damage, this actually scales really pretty well. And then lastly it would be your perk chance and your defence boost as well of course. All the other ones you will get in time, you're not going to want to have the points and not spend them, but these are the ones that you really want to focus on there. So with that, that is everything covered. We're going to finish up in a moment with some gameplay to actually show off the build, but if this has been helpful, please take the time to hit like, share and subscribe and leave a, a comment below as well. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will get back to you. But yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Enjoy the upcoming gameplay and I'll see you all again soon.